Well, welcome in the precious name of Jesus. My name is Robert Paris. I got a word right now that I believe the enemy is doing everything to stop because we got to recognize and realize that the spiritual warfare has intensified because we are so close and things are beginning to happen on the earth. We're starting to see prophetic things accelerate and the enemy um, who has been restrained by the church is suddenly seeing an opportunity where he may be able to come forth recognizing his time is short, recognizing that things are beginning to happen on the earth. And there's an intensifying, as I said, of spiritual warfare. But I want you to get a hold of something because the greatest, one of the greatest strategies of the enemy is the spirit of intimidation and fear. And he will seek through that spirit to hold you in the wilderness. He will do everything he can. We look at, for example, the disciples uh, after the Last Supper. They go with Jesus to the Garden of Gethsemane and it says they became tired through sorrow, overwhelmed as the enemy intimidated them, brought fear, and they realized they were losing control, and they knew everything was about to change. And maybe you recognize something in your spirit that something is different. We're seeing something change on the earth. Life as we know it is changing. And you recognize that a month, two months, three months, it's not going to be the same. We see a future and it's not the same as the past. The pattern that we've known over the years has suddenly been broken and we don't fully understand and we don't know and there's a fear because the enemy is bringing in what he wants to do to you. We look at a potential the present elect are so called his plan in the first hundred days what he wants to do against Christians and the beginning of a really persecution of Christians and what we stand for. And it's probably causing a lot of fear and concern in many. And we also see other things develop, a rebound of the coronavirus, uh, potential again for the financial market to collapse. I mean, there's a lot of fear out there. And the enemy loves that. And he wants to hold you captive, telling you it's only going to get worse. You will never receive or enter the promised land that God has for you. If you go to 2 Thessalonians, sorry, 2 Timothy with me, 2 Timothy chapter 1, I want to begin to share a message uh, and just let the Holy Ghost speak to you, minister to you, and break off you a spirit of fear. Now, in verse 6 of chapter 1, it says this, For this reason I remind you to kindle afresh the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of hands, to stir up the gift, that you have a responsibility in this hour to stir up the gift. We need to get before heaven. We need to lay hand on our spirit, man, and begin to command it, come forth, be stirred up. Now listen, in the context of stirring up the gift, it says, for God, in verse 7, has not given us a spirit of timidity or fear, intimidation, but a power and love and soundness of mind. God has not given you a spirit of fear. God has not given you a spirit of intimidation. That's the enemy. And I want you to see there's two reports. There's the report of the enemy and there's the report of God. When you got born again, God put into you his DNA. We know from the word that he said that my thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. But there was going to come a day where he would write his law on our hearts. How did he do that? Well, when you got born again, the Holy Ghost poured into you spiritual DNA. And you no longer think like the world. You no longer act like the world. And the world thinks you're crazy because they don't understand you. They don't understand how we think and how we see because we see now from a spiritual perspective. On a normal plane, people look based on their limited perspective, on their opinions, Okay, and they translate everything based on and based on how the media, how society determines this is what we believe. Truth or not, it doesn't matter. It's an opinion and it's what people want according to what they believe is right in their heart, etc. But the Lord says we see in part, but he sees from every angle and he wants to bring his people to the place where he says, look, receive the report that I give, the truth that I give. And what's being put right now, what's going to be challenged, what's being attacked is the truth of the word. Yet in Deuteronomy chapter 4, the Lord warned, you shall not take from the word and you shall not add to it. 
And the church is called to a place of trusting the word. Now, if I go back to Revelation chapter 3 and the church of Philadelphia, the church of Philadelphia is called to hold fast the word. And if you're going to hold fast the word, you cannot, you cannot add to it or take from it. It's not based on my opinion of the word. It's what the word says, what he says. Whether I like it or not, this is what the word says. And I have to understand that he sees from a different perspective. He sees from a complete 360, every angle, and even more than that, okay? And he knows the absolute truth. And when he says something, it's based out of a loving kindness towards us. We may not like it. You know, a lot of times my, my children, when they're growing up, I'd have to say no to them, and they didn't like it. But I knew better. I didn't act out of cruelness. I didn't act because I was trying to be mean. I was acting because of great love, and I understood that I had to say no. It breaks the heart of a parent sometimes to have to say no, but you know in your heart you have to for their good. Out of your love towards them, you have to say no to a child. Now, that child may not understand. That child may get angry at you. The child may act wrongly because they don't get the perspective that you have as a parent seeing the bigger picture. Now, Daddy God states the word certain things, and we have to receive it, and we have to hold fast. There's two reports out there, as I said, and one report the enemy is bringing is tries to intimidate you. He's trying to explain to you all the stuff that's going on to so box you in and, and really entrap you. As we look at the spirit of intimidation, you're going to see that it's a powerful force that held the children of Israel captive in the wilderness because they couldn't see things from the perspective of heaven. They couldn't, as chapter 4 in Deuteronomy says, cling to the Lord. And I want you to cling to Him in this hour. I am pressing in. I am doing everything I can to so stir you that you would gain such a spirit of boldness by getting into His presence. You'd be stirred up in His presence, that you would cling to Him, that when you pray, there's a clinging to Him. There's a realness, there's a depth, there's a fervency, there's a laboring. There is a, you know, just a straining of every nerve because, God, I've got to get a hold of you. You are my answer. And we are real. We're real Christians really praying because the church of Laodicea is a church that makes the noise. It looks good. It attends church. It does great things. But there's no realness to it. There's no intensity. There's no fellowship. There's no pressing and taking hold of the things of heaven. There's no, no receiving of the perspective of heaven. And that can only happen when you have that intimate fellowship with the Lord God. And that's what I'm pressing you for. I am pushing you to go after the Lord God like never before, recognizing the hour. What do you do when you get out of bed? Do you go after the Lord? Or do you allow your normal pattern of life to continue? you got to break it. We've got to change things as a church. We have got to realize the hour, and we've got to change things. You know, I don't want you just to get down before you go to sleep and pray, Oh, Lord, I give, pray my soul to keep, and if, you know, blah, blah, blah. No, I want you to get real. I don't want you to get in bed until you pray and stormed heaven and got hold of the things of God. I don't want you, when you get up, to pray and storm heaven, lay hold of God, what you desire, let it be birthed on the earth today. Your kingdom come, Father, your will be done in the earth, in my life, in the church, to be a people that go after him like never before, because you recognize there's so much at stake. You've got to get beyond you. You and your little world and your little problem, it's so much more going on right now. There's so much at stake. And the Lord is looking for a harvest of souls. And we need to be disturbed by that and have an intensity in our prayer life. So stir up the gift because God put in you a gift. He put in you a purpose for this hour and he's stirred up. And the thing that the enemy will use to put that fire out is intimidation. For you've not been given. And Paul recognized, Timothy, you allowed the fire to go out because of the spirit of intimidation of the enemy. But you've not been given that. But you've been given a spirit of power, love, and soundness of mind. Soundness of mind. You see things from a right perspective. You see things from heaven's perspective. Amen? Go with me to Numbers chapter 13, I believe. And I want to share with you the story of the sending out of the 12 spies. Okay? This event changed history and continues to mark the history of the children of Israel. 
If I go to chapter 13, verse 1, it says, Then the Lord spoke to Moses, Send out for yourself men, and basically says, A man from every tribe. Send them out to go spy out the land. Okay? And we're going to come in a minute and we'll look at Deuteronomy where we get a little more depth. We get to see things from a little different perspective. But in verse 25, these men return. And it says, when they return from spying out the land at the end of the 40 days. And see, many of you have gone and spied out the land. You've listened to every news channel. I mean, you've listened to all this and that. And you've spied out the land and it's not good. Now listen to this. And they proceeded to come to Moses and Aaron and to all the congregation of the sons of Israel in the wilderness of Paran at Kadesh, which means holy. And they brought back the word to them and all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. Thus they told him and said to him, We went into the land where you sent us, and it certainly does flow with milk and honey. And this is its fruit. Everything you said was right. Everything, Lord God, you promised was faithful and true. And many believers have that. Oh my goodness, yes. But, kill the buts. Because listen to this. Nevertheless, the people who live in the land are strong. Their cities are fortified and very large. And moreover, we saw the descendants of Anak. God warned them beforehand. God says this. And God says, I am with you. And you'll overcome but all of a sudden, the enemy came in and intimidated them and said, yeah, that's all true. And the enemy loves it. Yes, he will give that. That's right. The Lord said this is true, but he forgot to tell you this. He forgot to tell you how great I am, how strong. And the devil wants to make himself as big as possible and you as small. So go forward to Deuteronomy. Um, we're going to go to chapter 1 in Deuteronomy. And I want to see, so we get a little more perspective on what happened in the sending out of the spies. And it says this, um, verse 21. See, the Lord your God has placed the land before you. Go up, take possession, as the Lord your God and your fathers has spoken to you. Do not fear or be dismayed. Go. Go, I've given it. Go ahead and take it. Then all of you approach. So hold on. The Lord turns says, go and take it. I've given it to you. Do not fear. Do not be dismayed. But what happens? Immediately they start to get concerned. Oh my. And they then all approached and said, let us send men before us that they may search out the land for us and bring us a word of the way by which we should go up and the cities we should enter. Oh, they logically thought it out, put their case. No, yeah, you're right, we're going to take the land, but let us send in spies first. And they will come back and they will report to us how we're going to do it. And the Lord turns and says, okay, go ahead. Send out one man. It was the people that out of fear and intimidation that were stepping back. When God had said, go and take it, they came back with an excuse. They came back, well, we just need a strategy. We just need to know how to do it. When God says go, go. A lot of time God doesn't give specific details, but He expects you to go and be led by the Spirit. Remember, they had the fire and then they had the cloud, and they just had to simply learn how to walk with the Spirit. And God gave it to them step by step. God explained to them, I'm with you. You don't think that there's not one strategy He would have given them step by step? but they need to work it out. And a lot of times we have to get the details, everything put in place first, but it was an excuse. And it was trying to get them an opportunity to say no. I look at right now what's going on the earth and it should concern the church where the enemy is limiting what you can hear. You can't hear this. You can't listen to that. Who said that we should be censored in this hour? Glory to God. You know what? God is faithful and true, and we need to hear what the Spirit is saying regardless of what everybody else is saying. And so they go in, and look at this, verse 23, Then this thing pleased me, and I took twelve of your men, one man from each tribe. They turned and went up into the hill country and came to the valley of Ishkal and spied it out. They took some fruit of the land in their hands and brought it down. They got it in their hands. 
the very evidence of what God said. They're holding it in their hands. And they brought it down to us. And they brought back a report saying, it is a good language the Lord our God is about to give us. It's a good, yes, it is right. Everything you said, Lord, you're right. It's good. Yet, you were not willing to go, but rebelled against the command of the Lord your God. And you grumbled in your tents. And you said, because the Lord hates us and has brought us out of the land of Egypt to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites to destroy us. Where can we go up? Our brethren have made our hearts melt, saying, The people are bigger and taller than we. The cities are larger and fortified to the heavens. And besides, we saw the sons of Anakim there. Then I said to you, Do not be shocked, nor fear them. The Lord your God goes before you, and He Himself will fight you, fight for you, just as He did Egypt before your eyes. And in the wilderness where you saw the Lord your God carried you, just as a man carries his son. And all the way that you have walked until you came to this place. But as for you, you did not trust the Lord your God. They would say that they saw themselves as grasshoppers. All of a sudden, they get hold initially. I mean, they come back and everything God said is true. And they, yes, you're right, Lord. But the enemy comes back and intimidates them and says, yeah, but... I am greater. You are not taking this. You cannot have this. And the enemy always, always, always overplays his cards. He always overwhelms. He will come from every angle to so discourage you and so defeat you. But the Lord kept saying, do not fear. Remember. And he encourages you, and the Lord's encouraging you right now to remember all the things that he's done before. You need to go back and you need to remember the breakthroughs, the victories he gave you, how he's never failed you. And I know you're looking right now and you're saying that this battle is too big, it's too great for me. And yes, I see the evidence. Yeah, God, you want to do something great. I see, I can see the goodness of the land, but I see the greatness of the enemy. It's too big for me. This battle is too hard. You've just bought into the lie of the enemy. And I want you to receive the spirit of boldness. I want you to refuse to fear and get dismayed. I want you to take a stand this day to step up and say, God, I rebuke the spirit of fear. I have not been given the spirit of fear, but the Holy Ghost in me has anointed me with boldness and courage. I see things from the perspective of heaven. I receive the report that you've given and I go in and take the land because you are with me. Now, if we read on, the children of Israel all of a sudden recognize they've missed it. And they repent because God turned what he did. He said, listen, none of you will inherit the land. Not one of you. Except, verse, let me get the right verse. Verse 37, the Lord was angry with me. Also on your account saying, not even you shall enter there. Joshua, the son of Nun, who stands before you, he shall enter. Encourage him. For those that took the stand and got the good report, encouraged them. There is encouragement from heaven if you will take the stand. If you will not take the stand, there's no encouragement. In fact, they would get so discouraged and then they feel compelled to run up. And God says, don't go now because I'm not with you. But they go anyway, they get defeated. And it would build in them that greater sense of defeat. You've got to absolutely know and trust the Lord. He is the one that's fighting for you. He is the one that's keeping you. He's encircling you. He's before you. He's behind you. He's all around you. He is the Lord your God. This is the hour you need to cling to Him more than ever. You need to know the Lord your God. You need to have such a boldness and expectation in Him that has to be forged in the fire of His presence. There needs to increase in you the intensity, the fervency, the clinging in your prayer. Get a hold of Him. Get a hold of Him. Shake off that spirit of fear. Shake it off. It doesn't belong to you. You have to take and make a decision to shake it off. You've got to get a hold of the Word and say, I have not been given. You may feel it, but you've not been given a spirit of fear. You've not been given a spirit of intimidation. You've got to break it in the name of Jesus. You have to take authority over it because he who the Son sets free is free indeed. I am free in the name of Jesus. The spirit of intimidation must go. Now, maybe everywhere you go, every news channel, you turn on everything you look at, there is suddenly an overwhelm of the bad report. 
everything declares and decrees it's all over. Everything decrees a bad future. But glory to God, you're not of this world. You have a God that through a blood covenant, the precious oh, blood of Jesus, you've been brought into a covenant with the Almighty God, and He wants to demonstrate He is the Almighty One. He is the greater one. The enemy loves to puff himself up. He loves to make himself big and, and, and just intimidating. But there's coming a day where he'll be exposed, the Lord said, and the nations will look on this small thing. You. The enemy is small. Our God is great. He is the Lord of the hosts of the army of heaven. The enemy is restrained, 2 Thessalonians. He would love to do so many things, but through the church and by the Holy Spirit in us, praying through us, restraining the enemy. He wants to do all these things, but you know he's restrained? Do you know he's intimidated when the church steps up and the church has a boldness? He wants to do everything to kill and stop the church, just like the children of Israel. Absolutely hates it, hates us, wants to see us destroyed, wants to do everything he can. If the church will pray, the greatest power you've been given is prayer. You cannot imagine the importance and power of prayer. If you need to change something, you've got prayer. And prayer is the key to overcoming. You've got to get in the Word and pray. You've got to pray effectively, fervently. Not wish-washy religious praying, but real praying by the Holy Spirit, where there is a focus and there is a determination to see the will of the Lord birthed on the earth. There is a wrestling and breaking of the power of the enemy. There is an attacking and going forth in the name of Jesus and declaring the victory. There is a standing on the word and declaring over your life the things of God. Speaking life into your situation. The dry bones you shall live. Hope you shall spring forth. Declaring the word in your life. Not just speaking it nicely, but boldly with an authority by the Holy Spirit. I looked and if you haven't checked out, I just finished a new documentary on Evan Roberts. And in it, he talked about where he'd have these meetings and he'd say, we need to pray for the spirit of prayer to come upon us because you can sing and you can do all these things all night and not one soul will be saved. It will have no spiritual impact. It may make us feel good, but it doesn't change. It doesn't break things. It doesn't release the eternal purpose of heaven on the earth. But when you pray and really pray, when you go after God, you begin to break things on the earth. Worship is good by the Spirit, and we need to have that time and sensitivity to worship, but don't let it steal real prayer time, where you get in and grab hold of the horns of the altar and say, God, I'm not letting go until your will is brought forth in my life, and these situations break in the name of Jesus. And you keep reminding yourself, I've not been given a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and soundness of mind. Hallelujah. The enemy wants to say, you're crazy. No, I'm not. i got a sound mind. The enemy may say all these things, but you lay hold of the Word. That's who you are. What the Word says. Don't add to it and don't take from it. Don't allow the enemy to cause you to take from what the Word has said. Or dilute the Word. Or receive another report. You receive the report of heaven. You receive the good report. Do you know the children of Israel came back on the 9th of Av? That was the day they would then go into the wilderness because of their unbelief. That would become the darkest day in Jewish history. All these terrible bad events have occurred on the 9th of Av. It's a day of mourning where they are reminded of where God said, I've given it to you. Go. But they wouldn't receive the report of the Lord. Even to this day, they have never bowed to receive the report of the Lord. And there will come a day where they're going to have to choose and bow and say, I receive what the Lord says and cling to the Lord. And you can remain in the wilderness for the rest of your life if you do not lay hold of the report of the Lord and grab hold of it with a confidence and expectancy that God said it, God will do it. I'm going into my land. There's got to be a fighting spirit in us. We've got to go forward. It's time to move forward. He told them, go Remember that. Go back to the very first verse I read here in Deuteronomy. Verse 20, I said to you, you have come to the hill countries of the Amorites. You've come. The enemy is there. He never delighted. He said, the enemy is there, which the Lord our God is about to give us. 
You're about to take the strongholds of the enemy. I want you to see it from that standpoint. We are going to win. And that continues. See the Lord your God has placed the land before you. Go up. Take possession. As the Lord God of your fathers has spoken to you, do not fear or be dismayed. Go up and take possession. That is what the Lord is telling you, commanding you. He said, I am with you. Go. Do not allow fear in. Do not get dismayed. Do not get disgruntled. Do not get discouraged. Don't allow the report and frustration of the enemy. Don't become weary because of it, but get a boldness. Stir yourself up. Get real in prayer when you worship. It has to come from your spirit man filled with the joy that you've got in the presence of God. So now I'm worshiping full of joy. Oh my God, I exalt you. I lift, I worship you because I'm standing in holy awe of you. I stand in this holy place, Kadesh. It's holy unto you, Lord God. And there's got to be a place in your life which is holy. This is holy ground, God. This is sanctified, dedicated ground unto you. My life is holy unto you. And we come together in this holy place. And I worship you and I get to meet you. And I stand in holy awe of you, filled with your presence. And I start to see how great and wonderful you are. How gr You're the glorious one. You're the Lord of the host of the army of heaven. You're the almighty one. And so now my worship changes. And there's something stirring on the inside of me that's growing in confidence and boldness. You need that. You have to build in here. Instead of listening to all the reports of the enemy, instead of trying to strategize and work it all out, go. Go, trust them, get in the presence of God. That's the report you need. You don't need to go check it all out and do all your deep dive analysis. You need to get before the Lord God and simply wait simply exalt get hold of and then pray it on the earth see it birthed on the earth your kingdom come your will be done oh father that your name be exalted let your name be lifted up in this hour the devil has this plan but god through the holy ghost he doesn't know who we are he doesn't recognize the church is about to arise that we are the spirit-filled church and the Holy Ghost has anointed us and appointed us for this hour. He is with us. We are the restraining forces. The Holy Ghost prays through us. Mm, glory to God. We're pushing back. And we're here until the souls are one, until the purpose of heaven is accomplished. We don't go home until the work that heaven declares is done. We don't go home because the enemy chased us out. We don't go home because the enemy lied and deceived and broke us. No, we go out victorious by the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit came in as a mighty rushing wind. He came running to the battle and he's still running. He's still working on the earth as a mighty power. There's nothing greater than the power of Pentecost. And it's in you if you'll receive it. And it's on the earth right now and it's moving. And if we the church would lay hold of it, by getting into the presence of God and crying out like never. Getting real. Stop being a fake Christian and be real. Stop talking and doing the games and be real. Get before the Lord God. Get on your knees and seek His face and humble yourself and cry out until He fills you. Until He changes you. Until you're broken. Until you are bent by the Holy Ghost and you are so filled with His presence and you see things, and you know the joy of the Lord is yours, and you're overwhelmed by Him. We need that. You need a spirit of power and love and soundness of mind to consume you in the presence of God. You need the gift and calling He's given you for this hour to be stirred up in the presence of God. Amen. Get a boldness. Get a confidence in this hour. Be stirred up. It's time for us to go and possess the land. It's time to go up in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for watching. We are praying for you. I declare you are blessed in the name of Jesus. And God has not given you a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and soundness of mind in Jesus' name. Amen.